Hello and welcome to another episode of It's All Black Academics. Thank you very much for joining us once again. And I have, once again, a fantastic group of panellists this week. I'm joined by Kirsty, Ray and Nick. How are we doing, guys? We good? Good. Good. Yeah. good. If you're good, I'm good. Um, before we get into our first discussion uh, of the day, um, just a quick shout out to all you guys out there. I know all of you guys have either got a Facebook, an Instagram or a Twitter account. So please follow us on all of our socials. Facebook, it's all Blackademic. Uh, Instagram, we're on it's all dot Blackademic. And on Twitter and YouTube, where I want you to subscribe to our accounts there, are Blackademic TV, Blackademic with a K. So it's B-L-A-K-A-D-E-M-I-K. -A -A so hit us up on all of our socials and all of our outlets. Right, let's get into our uh, debate for the day, guys. I want to talk with you guys about uh, black authors, black writers, and literacy in general. So um, I'll start with you, Ray, because I know that you are one third of a fantastic trio that present a fantastic podcast called Mostly yeah. Knit, yeah. Um, whereby you guys review uh, books. Mm -hmm. And hands up, I'm quite embarrassed about my uh, reading um, output. I'm very, very slow and I don't read as <laughs> much, much, much as I should. And you guys go through like two books a week. Yeah. So it makes me feel really mm -hmm. bad. Um, first of all, I want to know from you, mm -hmm. is it just me or does it feel like this year in particular, there's been a significant uh, increase on the amount of books that have been published by black writers and black authors? Uh, definitely not just you. I think it's it started, I guess, a few uh, years back, really, mm. when all of these young, up-and-coming, uh, intelligent black women, black men, and young creators in general, they started getting, I guess, ideas, ideas that they've had. And I think what what we are seeing now is a level playing field. Mm. It's not quite level yet. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got such a long way to go, but our stories are important. And not only are we writing more, but more black people are in the publishing world mm -hmm. or more black people are getting in there. It's incredible to see so many different people in different industries coming together. Because mm. a book, like you can have an author, but you also need an agent you also need an editor. And so all of these parties need to work together. You can have someone writing an amazing black book, but if the editor doesn't understand their stories, they're not going to edit it in a way that black <coughs> people will be able to think, oh, like, this is this That is represents me. us well, exactly. yeah. yeah exactly. And so I think not only are we starting to see um, writers coming up, mm -hmm. it's, it's all the people in the background as well that needs to be sort of hotted up and um, and acknowledged. Okay. So we're seeing loads of publishers and loads of agents coming up. So let me ask you, do you think that that is the biggest and the most significant reason as to why we are seeing more books published by black authors? Because we now have more black people in publishers that get the work that they're receiving and know how to handle that, edit it, and then put it out. Mm -hmm. Is it because we've got now more people working within publishing houses, do you think? Is that to me? Or sorry, 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 <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Um, I would say that it's a combination of a lot of things. I'd say the visibility in other industries as well. And I'd just say, um, similar to Ray's point, a lot of creatives coming up in the industry, whether it's in fashion, music, it's all coming together, like Stormzy and Penguin, mm -hmm. like the deal that they got this year. Mm -hmm. I just think people are not afraid to speak anymore and they'll use any platform to get it. So I think the publishing industry are taking that and harnessing that and saying, well, we need to actually represent these stories in the correct way mm -hmm. let's um increase our quotas actually get people in, in 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 powerful positions to actually make that change and i think what stormzy did this year was absolutely incredible i think the fact that akala was sunday times bestseller just shows that you know black authors can have a space and can do successfully and there's room for this to actually be read and consumed by the mass market mm -hmm. and actually embraced as well there's so many books that i've got a list of i've just picked few that have been out, some of the more high profile ones, Don't Touch My Hair, Race and Class in the Ruins of Empire, British, uh, This Will Be My Undoing, uh, Children of the of Blood and the Bone. You've got a book yourself uh, coming up. Yeah. Tell us first of all about your book and also what I want to know from you is the process which you had to go through to the idea, to writing it, to submitting it to different people and then actually getting it out. What was that process like for you? Um, well basically my book I'm an artist illustrator, so my book is a combination of art and poetry um, and it covers the themes of mental health, love, identity and womanhood. 
and they're all four things that I like to kind of champion and put out through my artwork, especially mental health, um, which I've done a lot of work with. And this book has been, it's been in the making for a couple of years. Um, and I say that because I knew when I started this body of work that there would be something greater for it. I didn't kind of start the work thinking, I'm gonna publish a book. But when I had all this work with me and all this poetry, I thought people need to see this. Mm -hmm. And they need to see it in a format that they can keep, that can inspire people, younger people, younger generations. And so I started to collect, just yeah, collect this artwork. And um, I was working with a small publishing company on a separate project. and. They saw how passionate I was about my work mm. and um, we kind of came together and spoke about the possibility of publishing and I was so grateful for that opportunity because I wasn't given that by any of these other kind of big publishing um, houses or anything like that. They mm. weren't interested because my book is very niche. It's going to be like an art and poetry book. That's not something that you see every day really. Mm. and. <laughs> they kind of believed in me and they kind of encouraged me to put this book out and yeah it's going to be um we're releasing it next month which is exciting so it's been a really long process um but yeah they they understand my story they understand what I want to get out mm -hmm. to the world and yeah I'm just grateful for the support and do you also notice this current wave there is of more black writers coming through now? Do you feel like you're a part of, actually, there's not just one or two I can name, there's mm. a plethora of names now of people that are having their first, second and third books mm. published? Yeah, I'm seeing that a lot. And obviously with the rise of social media, I we, we get to see it so much more so we can celebrate mm. other people. And I think that's important as well. These um, young authors that are coming up, these black authors, we need to celebrate them and encourage them because if we're not supporting them, who will? Mm -hmm. We exactly. need to support you know, fellow black people, like it doesn't matter if they're in the same field as you or if mm. they're writing the same type of book as you. I think it's always important to just support other people. And am I right in thinking that there are now actually kind of small publishers that solely focus on black work and, 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 and black writers? Is, is that something that, that, that I'm, I'm right in thinking is, is a thing? Are there publishing houses that focus solely on pushing black work? Yeah, there is. I know of one, I forgot the name of one publishing um, company that does. I know of Knights of who publish um, young children's books from uh, BME authors mm. and writers of colour. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why I guess they were forced to do this is mainstream publishing houses, they I guess thought that black people only read struggle narratives, that's what I like to call slave narratives mm. or books with uh, pride rock in the background simulating mm. sort of wow. uh, Lion King theme. Mm. And I think those were the things that um, major publishing houses thought black people read. Mm. Um, if you want to sell a black person a book, let's sell them a book about slavery because that's their narrative. Mm. And I think yeah. what is great now is we're seeing books from people about anything. Mm -hmm. We're seeing love stories, we're seeing YA novels, we're seeing teen dramas, we're seeing um, Neddy who writes Afrofuturism, things that I never read before mm. because I thought, well, I'm only represented in that young black girl struggle narrative. Mm. Um, the rags to nearly riches, but you probably die before you end up mm. there, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think what is great is now we're seeing a myriad of, of stories and that is what we need to see. And mm -hmm. these publishing companies are coming up with the understanding that no, actually, we are very complex, beautiful people and we have very different lives. Just because <clears throat> we share the same hue does not mean that we are all the same. Mm. And we've previously been painted with that brush. Mm -hmm. And I think with the rise of social media, we're seeing comedians coming up on Twitter. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're seeing fashion icons, we're seeing bloggers, we're seeing yeah. so many people. And when the publishing houses see this now, they're like, oh, there's a market here. Mm. Yeah. These people not only are different, but they read and they buy stuff. Mm. And so we can't get it twisted and think, oh, you know, it's great because now they're bringing on all of these people. Yeah. It's the fact that they see that there's a market. Mm -hmm. And wow. that's great, but if only we need to utilize that so that it feeds our community mm -hmm. as well. Mm. Nick, how do we make 
reading fun for young people? Because I think we all are aware of the rise in crime amongst amongst young people at the moment, particularly yeah. in London. Yeah. And I wonder if you feel that getting more young people reading and not seeing reading as almost a chore or a bore, how do you feel, and this happens to all three of you, how, how do you feel we can make reading appealing and almost sexy to young people that that's what they want to do rather than hang on road and just hang with their brethren? And, do you know what I mean? Is, is there a way yeah. of making reading more appealing? Do you know what? It is, it's things like what Ray said, you know, mostly there is a fantastic podcast. It just is so relaxed. It's so chilled. It's just very kind of relatable to what we go through. And that's what social media has brought, relatable content, relatable chat shows, relatable stuff like that. So I think us leading the way as the generation, millennials, black millennials to actually do this, mm we can make it fun anyway, because we just have the source. Our culture has had the source. Our race has had the source. Our hue has had the source. Hip hop, we, we, just, we just have something in us that just make things cool. We start dance trends, we start music trends, books, mostly lit, the success of their shows that there was a niche in that market. So I think how to make it sexy is how to make us in the forefront of doing it, make the authors, make a variety of authors. Like my friend is an author, like she makes a kids. I didn't see black kids books, like proper young, illustrative no, um, novels for kids in ages. like. And when I saw her making it, she made it through um, my friend Hina Bryan's publishing house. Mm. So they, they both came together and made it. And um, it's called The Adventures of Maya. And it's kind of like, when I was reading it at her book launch last year, I was just like, damn if my sister had this when she was growing up. You know, there's so much room for just visibility alone. I think if we saw so many, you know, the Afrofuturism, all of those kind of diversity amongst our race mm. we would just read anyway because we find something for mm. us so it's about promoting using social media going outside of social media as well for people who don't use it and just showing that we actually have a market now or we're harnessing a market that's only going to grow mm -hmm. I, i've seen that trajectory over the last couple of years so i think over time we'll see that progressively i was obsessed with books growing up so I think if there's more visibility and more relatability, more people will become obsessed with them anyway. Uh, sorry, was you meant to say? Yeah, I was just going to agree oh. with you. Um, and I also think it's important to get out books that the young people want to read. We need to have subjects that they are interested in. And Is that the key word, relatability? Yeah, yeah, just relatability and just having books that they can see characters that look like themselves in. Um, my friend Robin Travis, he's got a book um, called Prison to the Streets. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, yeah, it's making waves at the moment because it's so relatable. Mm. He's kind of gone into prison, spoken to young men there, and they said, like, if I had this book kind of growing up, maybe I wouldn't end up here. Mm. And I think mm. it is important to get these younger people reading from early mm. these types of books because it could change lives. Well, on that point, my next question was going to be in terms of schools, because when I was in school, mm. I don't remember seeing that many books um, available and definitely pushed to, to me as a yeah. student yeah. that had black faces and exactly. about black narratives. Yeah. How do we, what do we think should be, should be done to ensure that, okay, the six, seven, eight, nine year old and secondary school students are exposed to more of these books and how important is it that they are exposed to more of these books from black authors about black mm -hmm. stories? I think it's so important and I think kind of as authors and just as people that want to see this change, I think we have to make it happen. Mm -hmm. We can't rely on the school systems. We can't rely on um, just kind of these establishments. We need to mm. set pace and we need to get these books into the school system. So it may be yeah. taken upon yourself yeah. and you know, speaking to school boards, setting meetings. Like I know personally with my book, I'm going to try to get it into some secondary schools. It's amazing. Um, because I want it to be there. Yeah. When I was growing up, I loved Jacqueline Wilson books mm -hmm. um, because that's what I saw. Yeah. And you know, no shade on how I love her, she's amazing, but she's obviously a white woman yeah. and she was my favorite author. I'd love to be able to kind of like, if I was younger and I saw these books from black authors i probably would have got into writing a lot sooner mm. um or i would have explored it so mm. i think we do need to take it upon ourselves to get these books we have to be proactive and can else. i can i just say chime in and say that 
the school system point is so imperative because we have a problem in British society. We don't talk about stuff. So mm. they're not even going to jump the bullet. Black History Month's probably not even discussed in some of these schools mm. because people are afraid to even say the word black. So even saying black narratives are available to these groups and like sectioning, not sectioning the class off, but giving them more relatable content based on, you know, the experience and what the teacher knows about them. They're not going to jump that bullet and go, there's black books, look at all these authors and give them that visibility some of these schools so I think it is down to unfortunately the authors to have to do the legwork and go into schools that have predominantly first of all black um, mm -hmm. students to pitch your idea of coming into the school to even just talk about your book and getting it out there and then when that becomes successful because it would naturally then expand to the wider establishment with less black people but those still black kids in those schools that need that kind of uh, incentive yeah. as well but it's it's hard it is hard because um to even pitch that is it's, exactly. it's so hard. And it feels like it's such a great burden on the author. Yeah, that's 100%. one thing that I'm like, oh, I don't know if we should be putting so much emphasis on what like the author is there. They're an artist at the end of the day. They're there to create and they're there to inspire change. And I think what needs to happen is for it to be a on a day to day. I think yes, we need authors to go into schools, and that is how we can change the narrative going forward. But I think on a grand scale we need to start dismantling what we think of the literary canon and okay. so when we like think about the greatest authors we're talking we're like shakespeare chaucer all of these big white dead men names <laughs> and i think because you mentioned how we have the source to make cultural change mm -hmm. and i think what we need to do is ensure that that source does not fade we need to oh 100 percent. yeah like yeah. we need to ensure that it's overflowing so much so yeah. that we're not only making change online and on twitter but we're making changes Legacy. in the literary canon mm. so in 20 years time when a young girl says oh you know i want to read a book about um about a, a young woman they're not saying oh let me read austin who i love by the way <laughs> but they're not saying i'm going to pick up pride and prejudice they're saying oh i'm going to pick up uh, children of blood and bone for instance yeah you know in 20 30 years time a young black boy says i'm not going to pick up great expectations to learn how to get rich i'm going to pick mama can't raise no man I'm yeah. gonna pick prison yeah. to the streets yeah. you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. so i think once we start making these once our source can you know establish and manifest its way outside online content yeah. and it reaches outside we need to start buying these books because People don't 100%. see nothing, they see the economy of scale, they see how much we're selling. And I think it's so sad, but we just need to really just be buying these books mm. and be getting people in the industries to be able to, to, to get these books out there because mm. it's just not going to work. And, and I just don't want to put so much pressure on the author because I'm like, you need to just create, like create so much, create so much mm. work mm. and leave us and the general population to start dismantling that canon. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. it's like Misty, isn't it? Like the success it's of amazing. that. It's yeah. just like we made that because we bought, Precisely. we went out, we showed up and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So that just reminded me exactly yeah. what you said. We have to not only support on putting the burden on the authors, but and, actually yeah. go out and champion and, those yeah, and ourselves. We don't, we don't even have like time or like space to be competitive because I see so many books coming out mm. which are very similar, yeah. but I'm like, yo, we don't have space we have not occupied I the space you. to be competitive yeah. so that's when i see fellow podcasts coming out i'm like yes we need more Support and once we've reached that you. level of excellence that's when i'm going to be like wait let's take a look <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i think we need to oh, we should just support everyone yeah. currently yeah i get so you. That there's more of us and then mm. we can afford to be competitive with our I work agree. I agree. so who are some of the authors and some of the books that you guys should be reading or you recommend other people should be reading who are the who are you reading right about now? Who's who's doing it for you? Oh man, no, you can't do that because I read my podcast in it, so I'm just like. Mm. All right, what was the last good book you read that you thought everyone needs to read that book? Um, so I really loved um, Children of Blood and Bone, because okay. um, I I even said on the podcast I said this is the Harry Potter that I should have had as a kid, because mm. I mean Harry Potter had like a few you know black characters that weren't the main. No you, scene you time at I all. Mean? Yeah, and. And so I think, for me, it's getting Children of Blood and Bone into the hands of young kids. Mm -hmm. um, young kids who, what I love about that book is, oh, you know, this isn't you if slavery didn't happen. That, that narrative just isn't there. Mm -hmm. And imagine a child growing up without that burden of, oh, what, so I was an enslaved person mm -hmm. beforehand? Mm -hmm. And how that manifests into a young person 
into an old and, and, and adult, there's there's always going to be that thing at the back of their yeah, head. Yeah. So I think, yeah, for me, uh, Children of Blood and Bone mm. was like really great for me. Any other authors or books that you recommend people should be, apart from yours, obviously, <laughs> from yours, um, what's doing yeah. it for you right now? Or, or the, even this year, what this book this yeah. year oh, is like. Oh, in your lane, man. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I got a shout out, Yomi, because I used to I used to work with Yomi, um, and she, she, she left um, where we work yeah. to basically pursue her own personal goals and achievements, and I'm so proud of her because yeah. it's not. I imagine it's not easy to put out a book and also to leave to some degree the comfort of the job she had yeah. to go out on a limb yeah, and yeah. put out a book risk it. and risk oh, it as well. Risk. So and and Elizabeth, her partner as yeah. well. So I got a shout out Yomi as well. Great book. I'm yeah. sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, um, I read um, Tiffany Haddish's book this mm -hmm. year, The Last Black Unicorn. It was so funny. So, so, so <laughs> funny. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. um, I like to read comical things sometimes. Like sometimes you don't, you know, you don't always want to read something, something too serious too and hard. Serious. Yeah. 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 So that's quite a good book if, yeah. if you just, there's loads of little hilarious stories and just her past, which is just crazy. Mm -hmm. um, currently I'm reading Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. Mm -hmm. I've heard that book still. Um, yeah, it's next. dope. Mm -hmm. Like I'm learning so much reading it as well. So what I want to know about that book, and there's a slight side point here, mm -hmm. is that book for black people or for white people? It's you, for it's, everyone. You reckon? It's for everyone. The author even says, I think in the first chapter that just because of kind of the title of the book, yeah. it doesn't mean that it's exclusively for black people. Yeah. Um, and she explains kind of why that was the title because mm -hmm. it started off as a blog online. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then that's kind of where she got all of this kind of the interest yeah. from and then she turned it into a book. Yeah. But I believe that white people should read it. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that is that book should just be sold to white people. <laughs> Genuinely, like, yeah. Because that's what I'm wondering. Is it for black people? Yeah. It's, it's good for black people. It's good for black people. Yeah. Yeah. It's a quick laugh for yeah. us. Yeah. Definitely for <laughs> white people. Like, I wish I could just have to stand on the street and just <laughs> hand up our yeah. But it's such an important book. I haven't even finished it and it's so important. So white people, get a book. Read it. Oh, gosh. So do you have one? Just have I was just going to say, Carla's book was really good. It just accompanied, it yeah, yeah, it's just accompanied my kind of journey that I've been going on, like, just learning and learning certain stuff. And it just it just validated everything. And I do love Carla. Like, there are, there's just a lot he's done for the industry as well. And I think he's, he's definitely a vocal piece for, for mm -hmm. a lot of our struggles. Mm -hmm. And he challenges a lot of people in a lot of um, spaces which con conventionally people wouldn't do. So he shakes the table. Uh, just finally, guys, on this one, how, maybe you two are a better place to answer this, um, how are black writers doing in terms of monetizing their work? And is that something that we're seeing more and more authors get what they're supposed to get for their work? And if not, is that an issue maybe across publishing period? Books don't make you rich. Yeah, I think that's a general problem. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't even say it's just okay. a black author problem. Um, when I kind of had meetings with my publishers, one of the first things they said is, if you want to be rich, don't write a book. <laughs> like, wow. it's not, and that's just being real. Yeah. Um, I think you have to have realistic expectations going into it. And there's some publishing companies that offer quite low percentages. Mm -hmm. Um, some offer more. I think it's just, to me, I see it as a general problem, um, a general issue. Um, yeah, but that's just what I've found. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've uh, the things that I've written for, when I received the contract for them and I looked at, like, their percentages, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Who would go into this? <laughs> exactly. Um, so it's yeah, crazy. like, just, I would say don't quit your day job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And it, uh, yeah, it's not going to make you money. I don't think that should be the, the reason why you do it. Exactly. However, there are like writers out there who write for a living. Mm, and yeah. Just because you shouldn't, you're not getting the money that you're owed, like you should be owed. And I think that the whole payment system in the creative industry in itself yeah. is just a shambles. Mm -hmm. And I think creativity needs to be um, heralded on the same scale and rewarded, and rewarded exactly. as other industries 100%. as well because you are literally pouring your blood, sweat and tears for somebody's consumption and they're mm -hmm. going to really love that yeah. and they're really going to enjoy it. So it's a service that you're providing just like anything else. 100%. Yeah. And so you should be paid your due for it. A specialised service as well. Precisely. It yeah. is. Mm. Yeah, books stay with people for years, mm. like teach them lessons as mm. well. So 
Unless it should you know, be monetized properly. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, guys, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It was great. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.